Oh, you have to be joking. They sent the wrong bearings. OK, a little later than promised, this week on Harris, we will be changing the bearings out on this unbranded 7x14 Chinese mini lathe. First job to do is remove the chuck and then remove the spindle. Clearly this is not the recommended method of uh, getting these off. I just don't happen to have a pair of spanners. I don't actually have one spanner the right size. Never mind a pair of spanners. See that again. Okay, just for the record, these are four mil. Oops, that's the this is piece that's come off. Just ABS plastic. The next step is clearly to get this spindle out. Now the spindle's got to go that way, in other words, towards the chuck. Although, actually, before I do anything else, I need to get the chuck off, really, don't I? Clearly, this spindle moves that away. Yep, so that this comes out that way. I'm reluctant to start whacking this with a hammer just to get it out. Um, even if I put nuts on the end to stop the threads getting marred, it's putting an awful lot of vibration and shock through the system. I'm just not really keen on doing that. It's a little machine. I don't want to start beating it with sledgehammers. So what I'm hoping to do is... Here, I'll show you. It's simpler. Put a bit of threaded bar through like that. Um, put a nut that side. Crank away with a nut and hopefully it'll draw it off. So this is my method for drawing the spindle out without the need for belting it with a hammer or a slide hammer or whatever. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go. Right, let's see how this lash up works. Actually quite well. There we are. There we go. Actually works quite well. I didn't think this um, tiny little press would work. I think it's the first time I've used it in anger. Okay, so here's our little pile of bits. Um, the old bearings we've taken off, the uh, spindle, yada, yada, yada. At this point, clearly, I would um, love to be cracking on with putting the new bearings on. Slight fly in the ointment there is, when I ordered the new bearings, give or take a million years ago, when they arrived, I didn't check them properly. And guess what? They've sent the wrong bearings. Yes, they are 7206Bs, which I wanted. However, as we can quite clearly see, they don't have seals on. So, um, about as much use as rocking horse feathers for this job. 
I have ordered a set from the supplier, which will be here, what are we, Sunday today, I'm hoping we'll be here Wednesday or Thursday, if I'm lucky it'll be Tuesday. So I'm afraid there is going to be a short hiatus while the right bits turn up. I mean, it won't be for you, it'll be a, in the next shot, but uh, for me it'll be about a week's time. But it does explain why this bearing video was um, delayed a little. Okay, the right bearings have finally arrived. These are, just for the record, can you see that? These are SKF 7206BE2RZP. And it says made in Austria. And if that ain't a sign of quality, I don't know what is. You can see they're, um, they're sealed on both sides. Which is what we want. I imagine there's some kind of plasticated tin. I don't know. Um, 2RZP zinc plate. I don't know. However, they look like they're the job. Okay, so what we need to do is just take these um, C-nuts off the end. Still waiting for the spanners to arrive from these, actually, but uh, there we go. Matter of interest, I bought these new because the other one's got a bit knocked about. Um, I have never seen such an atrocious thread on anything I've bought. I had to buy um, a tap and chase the threads through. I mean, it was extraordinary, the amount of got some footage somewhere I think on the mobile phone I'll see if I can find it the amount of metal that came off it was just unreal anyway the first bearing to get on will go this side um, and we'd be pushed down to the spindle and the way I'm going to do that is I have this little press that I successfully used before I'll see if I set that up now and uh, let's get that bearing done so as it happens the press was too small so I found myself a bit of pipe in the time-honoured fashion I'm belting it on. I'm never too keen about doing this because with your best efforts you, uh, you always end up shocking the bearing a little. But let's see how we go. It's at this point I realised I'd made a screw up. Um, I'd put the bearing on back to front. So the broad rim on the inner race that you see here facing upwards is slightly raised and thus should be mating with the spindle boss. By having it the wrong way round, not only is the spindle boss scraping on the bearing seals, it's also pushing the bearing the wrong way. So as you can see here, there's about a 40 thou, about a millimeter um, lip protruding. So I had to take it off and turn it round. You put one bearing in one way and one the other, and that way you uh, restrict all lateral movement. All right, just to give you a little look, that's that end, and that's that end. See if we can get a reasonable shot of that bearing pulling in. Okay, I want to say I'm really happy how that's come out. That's um, free running, but not, not sort of spinning round and round and round. It's free running. There is absolutely no play in that whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? So I can put some force on it. So... It moves with 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 just a finger touch, but when you kind of spin it with your hand, it stops fairly quickly. So that says to me that those bearings are kind of doing their job and are absolutely intolerance. I'm really I'm really quite happy with that. I 
I've got to be honest, I'm really happy with that. That looks to me about half of one of those divisions, but even if it's one of them, we're talking about, what, 0.4 of a thou? That pretty much on zero, I don't know if you can still see. Yeah, so, if I could... You're pushing up pretty hard, you can't see much of a change. Those bearings are really nice. I'm happy with that. We're turning okay. The run out seems to be minimal. One thing <clears throat> I did notice while I was uh, sorting out the pulleys on the back here. Can you see that those teeth are not engaging fully with that cog? It's clear that they're not made for that. This is an HTD belt. It is uh, four seven five millimeters long. It's a five millimeter pitch, and it's nine millimeters wide. Now I I got this because it seemed when I was um, doing the motor, it seemed the closest approximation to the original pulley, which I'm pointing to now, as I could find. But it clearly isn't right. I have noticed teeth skipping in the past. The bottom pulley I got that was a replacement, that is a proper HTD 5mm pitch, 32 teeth, just for the record. The top isn't, the top is 31 and is clearly the cog size is different. So I have lashed out and bought a proper HTD pulley which is the 5mm pitch and is 9mm wide. Um, as you can see, there's uh, work that needs to be doing. I'm mildly concerned in that this is um, steel. I couldn't find an aluminium one in 32 tooth, 5 millimeter pitch. So the next video will be about boring that out and fitting it and seeing whether perhaps we can reduce the noise. Certainly I would hope that we can increase the grip on it. So that'll be next week's, the week after, when I thought it was going to be possible perhaps to remachine that original pulley there and make it wider and I realised I was on a hiding to nothing there. But before I realised that, I decided to lash out and get myself a PF70 spin indexer. And I've also got, um, because it takes 5C collets. I don't have 5C collets. We are an ER32 collet house here. I've also bought myself a, a new adapter. This is... yeah, it needs some love. Let's put it that, that way. So um, that will probably be the week after. In the meantime, I'm going to call it on this. I now have a usable lathe again, which I'm very happy about. I'm sorry I was uh, a bit later with this than I intended. Getting the wrong bearings held me up a bit. But if you've watched this far, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.